We're styling outfits based on our black style icons. Her vibe is the vibe I want to feel when I look at my clothes. This is one of the most iconic members of the group. <laughs> a little bit random. I did see this outfit on Revolve and I said, I gotta get it. <laughs> did my bother you? <laughs> Today we are celebrating the most iconic, stylish, amazing, phenomenal, beautiful black women. Yes. I'm rooting for um everybody black. Black women have been shutting down carpets mm, mm. forever. Giving us trends, giving us melanin. It's just an experience, okay? So what we've done today is we've each chosen two iconic black women whose fashion and style have transcended the ages, okay? Yeah. And we are going to restyle a look from each of these women. And let me just say, I think this was the hardest part, was trying to pick, pick. one outfit. Yeah. To only pick two people also, like there's so many we can pull from. The list goes on and on. We got Diana Ross. Mm. Meghan Markle. <laughs> Meghan Markle. My mom. Your mom. Aww. Lizzo, I love Lizzo. Aaliyah, I almost picked you, Aaliyah, I promise. I Donna almost Summer. Oh. Raven. Uh, Raven. Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> My first style icon is Miss Whitney Houston. All right. Uh, let me first say that when I was growing up in South Africa, we didn't get American pop culture as quickly as they get it now. We only got the biggest names and Whitney Houston was obviously one of those names. There's something that's so magnificent about Whitney Houston and her life and her legacy is that everything she touched, I believe truly is timeless. Like every song she let out, every role she did on, on in movies and in TV shows, and every outfit she put on. There was something I feel like she just understood about the world and the way culture was moving. And when you look at her outfits, here are the things I think that the world has learned from Whitney Houston, okay? So Whitney Houston taught me to never abandon your basics. I'm talking your white t-shirts, blue jeans, turtlenecks, blazers, all the things that you think you don't need any more of. She's like, nah, you wear it. Impossible. Two, layering is everything. So Whitney, she wore the most iconic jackets and oversized blazers and dad jackets of all time. So yes, I had to get one. When I say it took me two days <laughs> to, <laughs> to find pick. this blazer. Not only is it a little bit androgynous and speaks more to my style personally, I'm not a very girly person, but I'm still feminine in a lot of ways. And the one thing I love about Whitney Houston is that she's taught me how to like mix materials and kind of explore my feminine side with like, matching different like silks and, and meshes and polka dots with flowers. It was all about the bedazzle, it was all about the jewels, that type of thing. Because she actually wore very understated pieces, but then she would accessorize in a way that is so amazing where you're like, oh my God, you look incredible. When in reality she wears, she was wearing jeans and a turtleneck mm -hmm. and a really awesome blazer. The, the turtleneck with these jeans mm -hmm. is just like so mm -hmm. iconic, Whitney. I know. Yeah. I love everything about the way she dressed, everything about her, her voice. She's voice. gorgeous, like that voice being the perfect accessory. Ah, I just love it. I love her. I love you so much. My first pick is the iconic <laughs> Naomi Campbell. Y'all, when I tell you that Naomi is has been an icon in my life, for forever. Like it almost makes me emotional because she is one of the, obviously the OG supermodels. She she is like the Christy Brinkley's, the Kate Moss is like, she was part of like the iconic group of supermodels that has literally been on the cover of every major magazine, has worked with every major designer, the blueprint for a runway walk. There is not, there is not one Gigi Hadid, Kendall Jenner, Bella Hadid that has not studied Naomi Campbell. Totally, she's like freshman class of supermodels. Like and obviously, Naomi wasn't the first black supermodel. We had the Beverly Johnsons, we had Iman, but Naomi definitely paved the way for so many. And the fact that this woman is still working, mm -hmm. she is still working with all the designers, she is still walking all the runways, looking the exact same that no, she has actually. looked her entire life. It's sickening. It's sickening. Thank you very much. This dress she wore for some 
iconic photo that she did and it's very similar to this it has like a little cinch situation but i when i think of like a long slinky like slip dress i think of naomi just killing it walking down the runway also i recently got into modeling it's been about two years now and naomi has just always been so inspiring for me from what i've read about her in interviews she's always paved the way and like been very big about supporting the younger especially the younger black models beauty comes in all shapes forms and Sizes. It is such a specific type of style, but again, it's one that is so, it's so like loved to this day. Yeah. Just being a black woman during that time and being like a white man's muse is like, let's talk about it. it was let's talk unheard about it. It's really iconic. Yeah. yeah. Like it was like, Today's day and age is a completely different situation. Right. Like back when Naomi started, there were hardly any black models and specifically black dark skin models. And the fact that she was able to break through so many barriers and shatter that glass ceiling for dark skin black women is just bow down forever. Forever. My love is unconditional. My first choice is Scary Spice. I feel like it's a little bit random. I'm not gonna lie. I did see this outfit on Revolve and I said, I gotta get it. <laughs> and if anything, that tells you how iconic Scary Spice actually is because yeah. I saw this outfit and I was like, let's go there. You like, know what I mean? Yeah. Also, I know it's not about the outfits today, but like, yo, body on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. it's comfortable. Whatever. This is not like a plug for Revolve. <laughs> We're talking about Scary Spice here. I grew up in Texas. I grew up in a very like predominantly white space. Mm -hmm. And I was obsessed with the Spice Girls, like pretty much everyone was. I watched that movie a million times and literally had the first album that came out was obsessed. And it was just cool to see like Scary Spice have a space in this group of like a bunch of other white girls and like still be one of the most iconic people from the group walking away from it, you know? And let's go ahead and address this, the elephant in the room. It is very problematic and weird to me that she was like the only black woman in this group and she was referred to as Scary Spice. Like that doesn't really, I don't vibe with that properly, but I kind of love that she just like owned it and probably not saying this in the best way, but I feel like me personally, especially being like in more corporate spaces, I'm constantly trying to navigate like not being an angry black woman or making myself as small as I can to fit into certain spaces. And like, there is a part of me that like really appreciates her just like embracing that she's just, whatever she wants Here. to be and right. yeah just being like yeah. authentically herself and it empowers me to be authentically myself and i don't know that's like the only way to live she was loud and proud in herself and mm -hmm. was like you guys can take it or leave it and it's one of the most iconic members of the crew Period. <laughs> <laughs> you you said that you really like this outfit and it seems like a random choice but the fact that you like this outfit and the fact that scary spice's entire aesthetic was this actually just shows that it's more than just the outfit, it's, it's just her style. Like, mm, right. she rocked animal print in a way that felt so cool mm -hmm. and like chic mm -hmm. and different mm -hmm. and really modern for being like in the 90s. I just feel like any black woman that's like older than me, they did what they needed to do. Like, they're worth being called an icon to me. So I'm just happy to celebrate literally <laughs> anyone black. Period. <laughs> it's not one specific thing that, that makes you go, ooh, that's girl power. So if I had a dollar for every time <laughs> I have recreated, restyled, used this person as inspiration, I would be a very rich woman because my second black style icon is Zendaya. I have been drawn to her for so many years. Her vibe is the vibe I want to feel when I walk into my closet and look at my clothes. It is non-specific and it is so freeing. The way that she perfectly balances her feminine style and her more androgynous masculine style is incredible. Mm -hmm. Over the past few years, she has solidified herself as an absolute fashion icon. She could literally wear something like this that's like just so comfy and casual and then like be on a red carpet with like a tight mini dress or like a long gown and it's, never shocking like never. which side of the spectrum she kind of looks right. like she's on like which makes it even more comforting so i went with a very recent uh spread because one i had to really 
try to remember which outfits I've done of Zendaya. Oh yeah, we you've also, done a lot. But we also did a whole episode together, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I think I've done a lot of these outfits. Oh, there's something so good about the pieces she's wearing in this GQ spread. One, all of the different aspects of it. It's a very, it's all attainable, which I love. It's all attainable. Anyone can put together this outfit. Uh, the bucket hat, mm -hmm. it's like a furry bucket hat with her. She's wearing these crazy cool like cargo pants with a white tank top from The Gap. It's yeah, a good tank top. The, the idea of taking basic pieces and making them feel not basic is so cool to me. It never gets old. It's always fun to try to do that with the clothes because a lot of us have clothes like this at home, you know? Mm -hmm. Just, it's putting these things together. I'd also just like to add that you make me very sexually confused in this get up. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and Sinead just like a, what was that, what was that, the, what the video? Styling men's clothing. Styling men's clothing. <laughs> Shout out this clip. It's Sinead in like the dolphin style long shirt and she's got the, like a bomber jacket on with a chain. Yep. Not you remembering every single detail. I remember. Oh my God. I remember. Hell yeah, I believe in black girl magic. Rihanna is just, is just, right. She's not human, mm -hmm. you know? The impact that this woman has had on pop culture mm -hmm. and style and fashion and finesse is just iconic. Rihanna doesn't follow the rules, she sets them. There's a reason why Rihanna is the queen of the Met Gala because she does not play. She comes on theme every single time. We all know that she's hosted. Anna Wintour trusts her because she knows that she understands the assignment. Mm -hmm. She is a boss, businesswoman. Mm -hmm. She obviously, we were introduced to Rihanna as a singer and she killed that. And then was, obviously she went into creating Fenty, which is my life. Thank, thank you, Rihanna, because you're the reason why I have a shade that matches my skin tone. And we have Savage. Like she has just done so much. The impression that she has left on us is like it, it, forever. So the green dress is paying homage to Rihanna's SOS video. It's a throwback. We all remember, do we remember the melanin glisten with the glitter? Yes. That's, I remember this. This is what I remember yes. from that video. And like hair blowing. It was a moment. There's something about Rihanna and the way she understands fashion mm -hmm. that is shocking. She is so in tune yeah. with not just like wearing an amazing outfit, but like creating a moment in pop culture that people will talk about. Like some of it's just straight up crazy, Bomb. but it's amazing. She's in her own lane completely. Yeah. She pays homage to so many like African hairstyles and nails too that a lot of people don't even realize that she's right. doing that on purpose. It's all intentional. Yeah. Yes. I love Rihanna so much in her fashion that she was actually my wallpaper on my phone for the longest time. The Swarovski gown that she wore to the mm. CFDA awards when she won mm -hmm. like the fashion icon award yeah. is my favorite dress of all time. It's the one she's naked and there's a matching headpiece mm, and there's yeah. gloves. It was literally dripping in diamonds and also she's very confident about her body and just like, why are we making this so like sexualized and taboo that we can't like free the nipple. Right. And she literally said to a reporter, because it's one of my favorite clips of all time, the reporters like said something about like, oh, like you're naked. And she's like, did my tits bother you? <laughs> Why, my tits bother you? <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, the first lady herself, Michelle Obama, I mean, Icon. Michelle's evolution from when she first started being in like our eye, I guess like the public eye, when she was first in the White House versus now, like she kind of decided for all of us what business attire could look like. She owns the power suit. She owns like monochromatic suit. This was kind of my take on it by giving it like a, I don't know, like a little bit of more of an oversized top and like a shorter short situation. But I just love her. Like there's something about a woman in a blazer and like being so feminine in that and owning a room. I, this like, is hella cute. I love so cute. that like the inspiration is there, but it's also Sierra. And I really, yeah. really like that. The yeah. color is amazing. The, the color. color. Yeah, the color, the color. is amazing. Oh my God. And the color on your skin. Mm -hmm. She's wearing so many other colors. I picked this because I just like wanted <laughs> to wear purple, but like with Michelle Obama, she can't go wrong with any color that she picks. It's gonna look good on us. Even purple doesn't sound like business to me, but like she still is like getting done and is like a businesswoman. And I love you. I really struggle with as being a black woman, like being professional and knowing exactly what that means. And to see Michelle Obama be the first black first lady and just kind of like wear whatever she wants and like look beautiful. No, it totally makes yeah. sense because 
because first of all, we could literally do a whole dissertation on this whole like right. being a black woman in a corporate business space, whatever. Right. Just because like, first of all, we haven't always been accepted. We're still not always accepted. Then we gotta talk about the crown act, how like our hairstyles are like literally like, you can't really work, right? Have right. that whole situation already. And then it's like the first black first lady She's first, there's literally hasn't been one. So right. it's like, and she had so much pressure as the first one because people were going to be extra critical of her. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I'm bomb and this is what I'm gonna wear and all colors look good on me, so what about it? I'm just so grateful that we have women like Michelle Obama who show us that, hey, a blazer and slacks isn't boring. It is mm -hmm. not boring. Listen, there's so many more <laughs> black style icons to shout out that we couldn't even get to, which no, is crazy, really. but like, how much fun was this? This was so much it. fun. I love it. You guys have to let us know who your black style icons are. So drop it down in the comments, okay? Yeah. And then let us know like your favorite looks from them. Yeah. Because there's a lot. Like Leah. Yeah. 